Hello everybody, this is Ryan over at High Carb Regenerator. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, like, subscribe. Today I wanted to talk about the balanced diet. I've been in a discussion with somebody about this um, over the last couple of weeks, a week or whatever, and I just got to thinking about it. It just doesn't make any sense. Why would we be the only ones in, in all of nature that would actually eat balanced diet? Now, I know what he's talking about. He's talking about the Gregor or the Daily Dozen or something like that. I'm actually going to at some point here hop into the computer and we'll go look at that. Um, but it just... It's just an expense that you don't need. Like you just need to eat the carbohydrates and everything else kind of just falls into place. It's kind of like Pritikin says. So here's Pr Pritikin. So Pritikin's book, this is the, uh, which one is this? Pritikin Program for Diet and Exercise. So he says, as you see, the Pritikin diet has once and for all done away with the classic quote unquote di uh, balanced diet. It was a feeble and ailing. It was feeble and ailing anyhow, and never very useful. Balancing meals probably began with the, uh, the American Diabetic Association system of insulin regulation. Later, during World War II, doctors urged people to eat from every each of the seven food groups. Sorry. And I don't know, I, th I assume they meant well, but it really hasn't made sense. And honestly, since his balanced diet has been around for most of the 1900s and really put into place in the 1978 with McCormick, who got a hold of, I forget what her name is, but she talked about the, um, the protein, how you know, not everything had complete protein or whatever, which is an absolute lie. She really didn't know what she was talking about. She sold a lie to a lot of people and the government just clung onto it and they started pushing this thing. And so it's it's gotten worse and worse and worse and worse. And actually, our health since 1978 has gone down, 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 down. But if you look at some of the prior studies, and I'm not a huge fan of studies, but if you look at some of the prior studies, especially not uh, ones that weren't attached to another company, weren't being paid for by another company, those are the studies I really watch out for. But these these studies that I'm talking about, like the 1850 study of the potatoes, they found that potatoes alone. <laughs> we're sustaining people, you know, like people were thriving on just potatoes. If you look in the 1600s through what the 1800 ish or whatever, when the, the, the potato famine happened in Ireland, they largely lived off potatoes and they were thriving. Uh, if you look at the Chinese, they were largely, and I know they had a little bit of meat here and there, but they largely live off of white rice and they were thriving and they still do. Like if you look at Japan, uh, a huge portion of most of their diets still is white rice and they thrive and they're skinny and they don't have anywhere near the health issues that we have here in America. It's it just, it boggles the mind, but somehow, so anyway, this dirty dozen, uh, the, it, the dirty dozen is actually the foods that you shouldn't eat conventionally. The 15, the clean 15 is the ones that you can eat conventionally. Um, but his daily dozen, it just cracks me up. Yeah. You know, it just, and the, the lack of water in it too. He only recommends 60 ounces. Well, we'll see that when I uh, hop into the computer. So anyway, and there's a, there's a couple other things that I wanted to go over. So let's actually hop in the computer right now, and I'm going to go over the uh, the Gregor's Dozen. All right, and here we are back in the computer, nutritionfacts.org, with Gregor. Here he is selling his app because you need an app just to remember to eat. And you got a spoon and an avocado. Daily Dozen. So we got beans, berries, fruits, I get tomato, um, broccoli, I'm assuming, greens. Interestingly enough, they're showing a mushroom. Mushroom actually has more arsenic in it than rice. Uh, carrot, uh, flaxseed, nuts, herbs and spices, whole grains, beverage, 60 ounces per day. I mean, that's just so pathetic. That's so low. And exercise. So apparently you need 90 minutes exactly. Not 91, not 89. Or 40 minutes exactly a vigorous so and don't forget to download your app <laughs> to remind you to eat um you know i mean it just you certainly don't need to flax seed and nut, nuts and seeds unless you want to put weight on i mean this is basically how i got weight on the second time is nuts and seeds and uh making hummus um, and then the 60 ounces, I mean, that is very low. That is, that's like a morning. I mean, you can start your morning off with that. Uh, 60 ounces, boy. Wow. That is, 
And then you got to download this. I mean, this is just all a money-making gimmick as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, some of these foods aren't expensive, although the flax seed and nuts really can get up there, especially if you like Brazilian nuts or, or like macadamia. I mean, those things are ridiculous. Even pecans, I think, are $20 a pound now or $20, $25 a pound. So that really gets up there. Um, and it's just not needed. It's just not needed. <clears throat> so anyway... That's all I really have to say about this, so I'm going to get back to the video. All right, and welcome back. So, as you can see, you know, I, I just, I don't understand where he comes up, up with some of this stuff. It really doesn't make any sense. He himself, and I know he's skinnier than I, but he himself is not in the greatest of shape. He doesn't look very healthy at all. He doesn't, I mean, I know McDougal has his bad days, but McDougal, who is older than him, looks way better. If you look a lot of the uh, other vegans, they look way better than he does. So take that as, as, as you will. And another thing that I wanted to talk about is I've, I've come across this guy. He doesn't really make videos anymore, but he eats mostly potatoes and he looks phenomenal. I know he is not the biggest fan of Durian Rider, but he likes Durian Rider, but he doesn't think that, you know, he thinks of Durian Rider is a little bit, um, not everybody that got to follow him, but he eats the same macros. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to watch that video. I've actually watched this guy's video a couple of times. Um, so if you've seen my, my channel over the years, you've, over the year, you've probably seen this video, but anyway, here, here you go. And then here's the guy I was talking about. So let's watch this video. Hi guys. Welcome back. Cal Clash Fitness. Now, a lot of people, you've probably seen me uh, review this guy before. I mean, he doesn't post anymore. He hasn't posted in two years, but I, this video always, um, I thought it was a good one. Keep saying to me, make more videos about what you eat. Uh, really interested to know about your nutrition, what you eat as a vegan athlete, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what I want to do is make a really, really straightforward and simple video for you guys. What I eat is a vegan diet, obviously, very lean, mostly fruits and vegetables based. Uh, I don't worry. It seems that a lot of people in Europe, at, at least, train in these sheds. Now, I've actually seen some people do it here, but it seems more common in Europe. I've I would never even think to do that, but I guess it's a good idea. About whether it's cooked or not cooked, any of that bullshit, as I've said in many other videos, okay? Now, what I eat is mainly carbohydrates, okay? So, carbohydrates. I eat very little fat and I eat little protein, okay? I do get my RDAs of fat and protein, but I don't eat necessarily that much more over and above. But carbohydrates, I'm smashing in the carbohydrates. Low fat, natural carbohydrates all the time. So, what do I mean by that? Potatoes! Just come back from the fruit and vegetable store. This little baby here. Look at that. That is what I'm talking about. Potatoes. Dirt cheap, next to nothing. These potatoes. Yeah, I mean, I can get a 50 pounder for about $27, $28. Not that bad. Potatoes. You know, you stick about a whole oven's worth of those in there. That is going to last you a severe amount of time. Okay? Now then. Don't be ridiculous. That bag of potatoes cost me four pounds. Wow, that's way less than I pay. But this video is a bit a bit old. Okay, four pounds for that beautiful bag of potatoes. You stick the oven on, you, you stick in as many as you can fit, wrap them up in foil afterwards, they keep for a couple of days, and you can just smash the potatoes back, plain, they're gorgeous, crunchy, soft in the middle, pounding them back, tons of energy. I w that's a lot of foil. I'm like a tree hugger. Uh, tons of, of vitamins and all the rest of it in there. They're not going to make you feel like shit. They're not going to make you feel bloated. Any of that nonsense. Guys, carb up. Potatoes, bananas, dates, whatever, whatever it is that you like. Carbohydrates are the way forward. Low fat, low protein, high carbohydrate. That's my... But he didn't mention the dirty do or the daily dozen strategy that's what keeps me energized that's what keeps me healthy guys if you like the video like comment subscribe there you go okay and we're back and another couple of things that i wanted to talk about is i believe it was the netherlands if i can find a, an article about it i will pause the video and i will go to the article here um and then i just thought this was interesting so how did it become uh potatoes become political in wartime Britain was using them during World War II. You can see this. I think this is a pretty famous picture. I mean, that's a really famous picture. And then you come down. This is a uh, potato peat. That's a really famous um, 
war advertisement. Soviet Union was using them. Germany. I mean, there's just so many countries. Uh, if you look at Denmark and the Netherlands, they were using them. So potatoes have been used as a staple for thriving. <laughs> I mean, these people were in a, one of the most crazy times of their life and they were thriving on potatoes, not balanced diets. But anyways, back to the video. Back in the Netherlands, I believe it was, during World War II, Germany was stealing all of their livestock and all their, you know, quote-unquote, really good food, right? And the Germans were actually degrading in health. And the only thing that these people in, I believe, the Netherlands, I'll find, I, hopefully I can find the, uh, the article about it, were left with nothing but potatoes. And they were thriving. Their, their health was skyrocketing. It kept going up and up and up. And... The lights went out and, um, <laughs> one second, and they were thriving. They were losing weight. They weren't having heart attacks anymore. They weren't having the cancer anymore. And they were, they were absolutely thriving. And the doctors couldn't figure this out because a lot of the people in Europe were having declining health and they just figured it because the, you know, of World War One, and then, you know, a couple decades later, World War Two starts up and they just figured, you know, it, you know, there, there was starvation going on and they just figure, you know, all the stress from this, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it was a stress from eating the meat and every, the dairy that people were eating and their health was going, it was going, it was really getting good. And then there, there was also the study that I'm going to post here because McDougal actually talks about this study, but he's never actually just put it up on screen. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into the computer and bring this up on screen. It was the con study and you'll be able to see the numbers from the con study in the video. So you can, if you want to go uh, read it yourself, I've put it in a couple of videos before. If I remember, I'll put it in this one, but the con study was they took two people, two athletic people, a male and a female, and they put them somewhere where they couldn't get their own food. They were Their food was completely controlled. They were allowed to do whatever they wanted to. I think they were training for the Olympics at that time. And they were given um, oil or butter and potatoes, and that was it. And somewhere in the study, I believe that they didn't even want the oil anymore. They were just eating potatoes. And they were they were slender. They weren't having any degradation, degradation or deterioration or whatever it's called. And they were thriving. And actually, they didn't even want to come off the study. They were, they were just so happy with, with the way things were going. And they were only eating potatoes. So that really throws this idea of, idea of a balanced diet right out the window. They were thriving. These were Olympic athletes who were thriving on this potato-only diet. And there's there was another one in the 1850s. And then you got that guy who did it in Australia. I forget what his name is, but he lived on on potatoes only for a year. Maybe I'll, if I can remember his name, I'll pop a video of, of him in here. All right, and here's the study that I was talking about, the Khan study. Um, it was 1925, I, I believe, in Poland. And I'll link this down below so you can read the whole thing. But basically, where was it? They were they were eating a lot of fat in this too, and I think they told them to stop doing it. Um, McDougall says that they didn't eat any fat in it, but that that just wasn't the case. So the amount of fat consumed was not accurately estimated it varied from 120 to 150 grams a day that is a lot of fat but i believe if i read correctly they they stopped wanting it they, the butter they, the potatoes were either steamed or unpeeled with the consumed with butter and salt or fried they were sometimes uh, mashed for cooking or sliced and made into a salad with a little oil i mean it was a lot of fat in the later stages of the experiment, it was found, however, that simple steamed uh, cooked potatoes seemed the most palatable, and this method of preparation was therefore generally used. And I think they cut out some of the fat at the end there, but I just, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to even eat that much. I've never really loved, um, like, oil and stuff like that. But you can read this. They, they were not actually, at the end there, I mean, the, they, they started losing quite a bit of weight even though they weren't really trying to. So I'll leave this reference down below. And I'll 
Australian man who ate nothing but potatoes for an entire year has lost more than 100 pounds. Subsisting solely on the root vegetable for every meal has led to a 52 kilogram weight loss. I started out on the 1st of January to do uh, a whole year of eating nothing but potatoes and it's been incredible so far. I've lost so far 50 kilos, which is over 110 pounds. At the beginning of last year, I was diagnosed with clinical depression and anxiety and uh, that's totally changed as well. Uh, I don't suffer with that anymore. Uh, my sleep is better, my concentration is better, my, my alertness is better and, uh, and my relationship with food has totally changed to the point where I don't rely on food at all for comfort and enjoyment and emotional support and things like that. And uh, I think this has totally changed my life for the better and I couldn't be happier with it all. Melbourne. Hi, I'm Chris Voigt. I'm the Executive Director of the Washington State Potato Commission and I am probably the biggest potato lover there is out there. And to prove my point how much I love potatoes, I ate nothing but potatoes for 60 days. I mean literally nothing but potatoes. No toppings on them, you know, no salsa, no other vegetables, no sour cream, no butter, nothing like that, just strictly potatoes. And what I was trying to do, the, the essence of this experiment was really to prove to the USDA or the federal government that there was an amazing amount of nutrition in a potato because uh, for a while there and still even today they're trying to restrict or exclude the potato from a lot of its nutrition programs and it just doesn't make sense whatsoever and we're back so as you can see this balance idea of a balanced diet now unfortunately he has gotten a little kind of weird with the balanced diet so he's into the balanced diet now i think which is weird because his name or his success basically was all off just eating potatoes but whatever um and, and it's just the last thing that i wanted to leave you with is you know if you watch nature out here you don't see the nature out here with the little daily dozen uh clipboard like up oh, i gotta have my nuts now oh, i gotta have a tomato but it's Oh, didn't have my water yet. So they don't live like this and they thrive. And they, any animal out there that you see in nature that does not have contact with us, does not have food from us, thrives. They're the exact weight they're supposed to be. They all look identical. You know, hippos all look the exact same. Rhinos all look the exact same. Elephants all look the exact same. Lions all look the exact same. And they eat the diet that they're supposed to. And it's very just mono meal. So... Think about that. Hopefully this video did it did you some good. Comments, questions down below, obviously. If you think this would help somebody, share the video. That would help me a lot. And I will talk to you in the next video.